Hello everyone, I'm Kaya Sel, a self-taught artist from Philippines. I'm often asked how I learned to draw digitally and so I decided to make this tutorial video. Please note that this tutorial is intended for total beginners that don't have any experience or knowledge in digital illustration. Aside from MS Paint that I've learned in school, the first art program that I learned to use was Paint Tool Sci and then I switched to Clip Studio Paint. For this tutorial, I will be using Clip Studio Paint Pro as it is the one I'm using right now. I'm also using Yulon Canvas 16. I've been using CSP for about 7 years already. And this is not sponsored by CSP or anything, I just like this software and also disclaimer, I'm not an expert in this program. There are still a lot of things I don't know, but I just want to help any beginner artist who aspire to learn how to draw digitally. I'm also open to correction, so please let me know in the comments below. So this is how Clip Studio looks like. I don't really use all of the features in here to be honest. There's only two things here that I often use. First is the Clip Studio asset. Here you will find all available materials to download, both free or not. Brushes you can use, background, 3D materials. Some materials are not for free and it can only be purchased either by gold or clicky tokens. Open paint, you just click paint. And to start a drawing, same with all other programs, you can just click file, new, and here you can have many options depending on what type of illustrations you want. There's a setting for comics or webtoons and even for animation. I don't make comics nor animate, so I only select illustration. For resolution, it's recommended to have the DPI dots per inch between 300 to 350. I set mine to 300 and a dimension of 3000 by 3000 pixels. Sometimes I might have to set it bigger size depending on the illustration. For VTuber models, I set up to 5000 by 10,000 pixels. It's always nice to start with bigger canvas with higher resolution so you can resize it without affecting the quality. If you start with small canvas and want to resize it in a bigger canvas later on, it could turn out pixelated. I know some people would set their canvas at a bigger size, but I don't really use more than 10k because it slows down my PC, especially when I open multiple images together in which I always do to view references while I draw. Now that we have set our canvas, here's a simple short introduction on the software interface. This side here is where we will see our different tools, pens, brushes or bucket tool, selection tool, um, and this is for the sub tool window. Here you will see all types of brushes that you already have. And this is for the color wheel. This is for the navigator where you can see how your illustration looks overall. Though it is very small, at least you can have idea how it looks like or at least you are aware if you're viewing the flip view of the illustration. This here is for layers. Layers are like stack of transparent papers. They are essential feature of image editing software and some people are actually comfortable to draw in single layer like drawing in just one piece of paper but as for me i like to draw in multiple layers sometimes i would reach 400 plus layers if the illustration is really detailed or when i want to draw a vtuber model knowing how you arrange or place your layer is very important you can also organize your layers through folders and this is layer property where you can apply settings for your layers which we will discuss later on. To better understand how this program works, it's better to make a simple illustration. Let's draw a simple headshot, starting with a sketch. For a sketch, I use any brush depending on my mood. I'm using a brush that I downloaded before. To zoom in and zoom out canvas, you can use your scroll wheel. If you want to rotate, you can press shift and control the scroll wheel. Personally, I prefer to draw with my pen more instead of switching between holding my pen and the mouse. That's why keyboard shortcuts are very helpful. And we've finished our sketch. But I noticed this part is a little bit big, so I want to resize it. To resize something, we can use transform tool. But first, we need to select it. Click the selection tool in the tool menu. There are multiple ways to select an object. You can select the creating a shape or a brush. First, let's try using the brush. For me, I find it time consuming, so I mostly use polygon. 
Now that I selected it, I can transform and scale it to however I like. Go to edit, transform, scale and rotate, or a shortcut, control T. See, here is the reference point. You can drag it anywhere and when you resize together by pressing Alt, you resize it towards that point. Now that the sketch is finalized, we can start working on the line art. But creating a line art on top of this sketch would be confusing if you don't adjust its transparency. Make sure the layer is selected, then adjust the transparency according to your preference. You can also change the color of the layer by clicking click layer color. The default color is blue, but you can also change it. Click the selected color and from here, you can just select to whatever color you want. When I when I draw a detailed sketch, I usually divide it in different parts, so having different color in each layer is very helpful for me. Now we can make line art in a new layer. To create new layer, click new raster layer or new vector layer. For illustrations, I just use raster layer. Better to rename your layer so it is easy to identify layers. I don't really rename all layers, only those which are I think are important. To rename. Simply double click the name and type the layer so I will rename this as line art. Use your chosen brush. Like other artists, many lines are not totally black. It's either purple, dark purple, or pink. Not totally black, but it's just darker. But when I do the line art, initially choose black first, then later I change it to a desired color later on. Change the color, you have multiple options. First option, we can lock the opacity or transparency by clicking this icon. What this does, it locks the transparency so we can do or draw any changes on it, but you can change or erase the areas that already has colors. I've selected a dark purple on it and applied it on the line art. Another step is we can use the same method when we change the color of the sketch layer. But sometimes, I color some parts in the layer, especially around the eyes, and this method doesn't let me do that. I also find it time consuming if I decided to change the color of the lines later on. The third step is the easiest way for me. First, create a new layer on top of the line art layer. Using the fill or bucket layer, fill the layer with the desired color and clip it to the line art, and the color will only apply on the line art. And now it's time to color. And this is where layer is really helpful. On traditional drawing, you only have one paper. So if you messed up, it's hard to fix. But in digital, with the help of layers, you can separate colors or parts in a separate layer. I start my coloring process with a base color. There are multiple ways to color and it depends which you find more convenient. For this video, I can show you two common ways to color here in Clip Studio Paint. First, we have to create a new layer under the line art layer. And for the first step, you can draw the edge manually by a pen and use fill to fill the colors within. Make sure there's no gap on the lines. The second way is setting up the line art as a reference layer and fill it on the selected layer. To do this, set the line art layer as the reference layer by selecting this icon. Then go to the bucket or fill tool and be sure to click reference multiple and select reference layer. What this means is you don't have to draw the edges again before you fill. See, it's that easy. Some parts have gaps, so I just manually fill it with a brush. Sometimes if there are gaps in the line art, bucket tool will also fill the other areas you don't want to color, so I just close it on the same layer and fill it. Now that I've finished all the base colors, which I've separated, I can start shading. This is where clipping is useful. When a layer is clipped in a layer below it, the contents of the clipped layer only gets displayed within the area of the layer where it was clipped. 
like this for example. As you can see, even though I extend the color outside of this area, it will not show because the layer where I clip this current layer doesn't have anything here. However, if I remove the clip, it will display the colors or the contents of the current layer. I will color the rest of the drawing using this method. And our illustration is done. I hope you find this tutorial helpful and feel free to drop by comments or questions below. Thank you again for watching and good luck with your art journey.